Hello, everybody. It's Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to the Pearl of Wisdom Show, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today we're going to be looking at something very interesting going on in the NHL land. We're going to be looking at a Jenny Malkin and the possibility of him maybe moving on from the Pittsburgh Penguins, where he may go, what teams would be interested, and what's the possibility of it actually happening? We're looking at this from some articles that have come out. Um, one from an insider, another one from maybe a little more reputable place, but the insider put his name on it. He's a pretty good insider. We're going to take a look at that. Um, first of all, before we go on, sub up. You can tell me if you agree with what I'm about to say. I personally agree with Hextall with what he's doing. Uh, the offer, which we'll get to in a second, is an offer that basically says, have you made enough money? Do you want to win in Pittsburgh right now? Because if we are going to win now, we're going to need more than you and Latang. Latang is the other one. And maybe we'll look at that in the, in, in the next episode. But it's going to take more than just you two. We're going to have to fill out the roster more. And the only way we're going to do that is if you take this. So do you agree with that? Do you think just bring Latang and Malcolm back and that's fine. Let's roll again. Maybe Jari's healthy. We can, we can make it go. You look at Tampa Bay. Look at Colorado. Does Pittsburgh compete with them right now? At this, with just Latang and Malkin filling out that roster? I don't know. You tell me. But I don't think so. I think I would do this too. And if they turn it down, then you got to have a nice talk with Sidney Crosby. Um, yeah, we're probably not going to be a contender for a while. You want to hang around here and help these kids? So, all right, there it is. This is the article right here. Uh, Penguins, Lowball, Malkin, and Latang. And this is in, what is this? Anthony Sculter. Sculter is a writer here, and the insider was Rob Rossi, very big insider in Pittsburgh land, Say, and he says this on 937 The Fan, that the Penguins offered Chris Letang and Evgeny Malkin three-year deals worth $15 million, so $5 million per, and that those low ball offers did not sit well with Sidney Crosby. Okay. It uh, goes on to say way back in January they had discussions and Hextall doesn't want to talk about personal discussions. I don't blame them for that. So he basically puts it on Malkin's hands to end Latang's hands to say, you know, have you made enough money? So let's look at what Latang kind of didn't say specifically about this, but it's hard for me right now, Malkin said. And this is on Sportsnet, a very, you know, a Canadian big broadcast, so a very reputable source. Uh, it's hard for me to say right now, Malkin said. In fact, it's his own words when asked if he expects to remain with Pittsburgh Penguins. We just lost a couple days ago. It still hurts. I understand it's a business. They always say that. You never like those words. I understand it's a business when they're asking a question like this. Uh, I love the city. I love these fans. Of course you do. But I know if the team wants new blood, young guys, if they, want, if they say to me, you should move on, I'm fine. I don't think they're going to say that. They obviously didn't say that. But they might as well have said that. I understand it's a little bit tough year for me, but we'll see. I'm glad to be here. I, I hope I stay here forever, but that I retire here. But I understand it's a business. In, it's a business in player land means – Money is an issue. So, uh, it's hard to believe I'm still a good player, and I believe good players sign good contracts, he said. See? Money not being a factor this season, but clarified Tuesday that the number will be a realistic factor in the decision moving forward, of course. I mean, I know my price, and my agent knew my price, and I think the team knew my price. Again, it's a business. We'll see what's going on. I want to play for three, four years. 
money is not a big deal, but I have family, I have parents, and I want a good future for them. Understandable. So is $5 million a year going to be enough? I think he could get eight on the open market. Is he going to throw $15 million away for his family and his parents? I'll tell you what, I don't think I would. So you just take that as you want. You can call me whatever you want, but I love my city all day long, but for $15 million for my family, if my family's cool with moving, we moving. All right, let's go to the Philadelphia Flyers was the next one we were going to look at. First one we're going to look at, actually. And you're all, I bet you, they're freaking out in the land right now. He's going to go to the Philadelphia Flyers. The, the enemy. Well, think about it, my friends. The, the other team is only the enemy when you're not on it. To a lot of players. I, I was like that. I wouldn't even care about going over there. Yeah, you were my enemy when you were on the ice. If you put me somewhere else and I'm playing against Pittsburgh, Crosby is my enemy. I don't care. I was just one of those people that could just turn it like a dime like that. It didn't bother me. I don't care if it was my brother. Like, you see the Kachucks there with Brady and Matthew? And people going, oh, he shouldn't be cheering on his team. Up When Brady's on the ice and Matthew's on the ice, Brady will beat the crap out of Matthew. They probably did it in their own backyard. Like, it's a different thing for me when I'm on the ice. Maybe there are players out there. In fact, apparently, Marc-Andre Fleury couldn't play for another team we're going to be looking at because of that, but I don't buy it. But we're going to look at the Philadelphia Flyers. And why the Philadelphia Flyers? Why, do, why are they the first team we're going to look at? I think they're the least likely team. Don't get me wrong. But the, aren't the Philadelphia Flyers rebuilding, you ask? Nope. Nope. Doesn't look like it. Uh, it the Chuck Fletcher is using the, uh, it's not like a gut thing. We're going to retool. Meaning they're going to trade a couple players away, get some draft picks, and then add some more players and go for it again. Uh, it says in this article, this is another article by, I should really give the guy props, Jordan Hall. Excellent writer. Excellent writer. Um, it's not like it's a gut thing. We, Ellis comes back and Corturier comes back. We're, we're in a terrible spot right now. I can tell you I'm angry. Yeah, everybody's angry that they're losing, but they figure that if Ellis comes back healthy and Couturier comes back healthy, they're not a bad team. And they're going to look, this is just before the deadline they talked about this. So they have Farabee, Carter Hart, Couturier, Ryan Ellis, Kevin Hayes, even Provorov, Ivan Provorov. Connect me a lot. You throw Malkin in the mix here on the on the second line, and if he can stay healthy, because they don't seem it doesn't seem to matter to them about teams having health problems. They have Kevin Hayes, they have Van Riemsdyk, <laughs> uh, Ellis that they picked up that I just talked about the aforementioned Ellis. They all had health problems. So, um, but if he can stay healthy, and you put Malkin in here, Hayes down here, and you don't. Now, we're going to look, don't worry, we're going to look at, because you're all screaming right now, we don't have the cap room. We don't have the cap room. Just wait. Just wait. Uh, Malkin in here with Van Riemsdyk and Tippett, Konechny, Hayes, Lawton, Atkinson, Couturier, Faraby. That's actually a really solid top three. It's That's a playoff caliber, uh, making the playoffs caliber top three for sure, as long as they all stay healthy. Uh, like they said, you bring Ellis back, play with Provorov. Sandheim, I guess he has to play with Rasmus Ristolainen. That was a terrible move. By the way, Philadelphia is one of my teams. So it's hard for me to talk about this. And no, I wouldn't do this. But I could see Philadelphia doing it. Because I don't buy their rebuild crap at all. Get a couple picks. They kiss ass to their sponsors all the time. And it's the reason why Philadelphia sucked for as long as they have. They make poor reaction uh, reaction moves, quick reaction moves to try to get the team into the playoffs again. They've shown it over and over and over again. This team doesn't build properly. 
They got people in there in their draft and development team that are not good enough and they don't fire them. It's a shit show. And I would not be surprised if they do this. So now that you ask me, now you're going to say, well, you know, why would Malkin go here? This is their enemy. Like I said, I don't think that would matter. He doesn't need to move his family. He just has to move like right over there. And he can be part of something. Did it, it didn't matter for Yager. Yager did it. No problems whatsoever. Cap space is going to be the next thing. I know you're all screaming about it. Five million in cap space. Capped out. Yandel's gone. Connaughton's gone. You don't qualify Morgan Frost. There's no reason to if you're going to do this. And I, I know people are losing their minds. you got to sign Tippett. And you got to sign Nate Thompson. No, you don't have to sign Nate Thompson. You just bring some kids up. Sign Tippett. And then try to get, like, I heard they're buying out Oscar Lindblom. Uh, that'll give you another $3 million. It does make it very difficult. And where the heck do they put all their money here? Get a cheaper uh, backup for Carter Hart. And move on. Try to give them six, seven million dollars a year. You're capped out, no doubt about it. See if they'll take the seven. Like I said, it's an unlikely scenario. Maybe you can figure out another way to get some more off the books to fit Malkin in if you think that's going to work. I think it's unlikely, um, but I do see I do see it as something that Philadelphia would try to do. That's what I mainly want to talk about here. Do you not, Philadelphia fans? And I'm going to send this to you. Sub up. So you can comment in the comment section of my YouTube channel. Uh, go sub up to my YouTube channel. Tell, talk to me. Don't you believe, don't you think Philadelphia could do something like this? Even though we probably all agree that it wouldn't be a good thing to do. Next, Buff, the Boston Bruins. This is happening. This could happen maybe if Patrice Bergeron does retire. And uh, there has been talk. I don't have it here on me here. I didn't put it up there, but there has been talk that basically Bergeron has said it's either Boston or nothing if he does come back. He was hugging the referees on his last game. Who does that? Unless you're going to retire. Nobody hugs the referees for the love of God. So if that's the case, though, you would think that it was because Boston's not offering him a contract that he's going. And if that's the case, then you would think that that would be a rebuild altogether, and I think that's the most logical thing for Boston to do. That's why I only have Boston as the second choice here. But they do have, what, $2 million. They only have $2 million in cap space as well. However... I don't know if Jake DeBrus wants to go. Uh, if you can find a home for Felino, you can probably find enough room to get a Melkin in there. And let's look at the lineup and just play some young players around this group. And basically, Melkin would just take the Bergeron spot in this line. And you still have a decent enough team to make the playoffs if that's what you want to keep on trying to do. And that's the only reason why I would do this. I wouldn't do it. That's the only reason why I put this in here is teams hate the idea of rebuilding. And again, I'll go this sub up to me. Talk to me about what you think should, should happen here. But people, I think you have to realize that teams have sponsors. Owners make money off of sponsorship. Okay? And if you tell a sponsorship, spon your sponsors you're going to rebuild, it's like a breach of contract. They'll tell you to go stick it in your hat. We're not sticking around for this. We don't want our sponsorship attached. And then you got to find other sponsorship. And they'll use that leverage to have less money. It's all about money. It's all about money. But if they have already talked to their sponsors, like apparently the Detroit Red Wings did, and it was fine. And they said, oh, yeah, we'll stick around. Don't worry about it. Hockey's huge here in Boston. We, we're, we're behind you and all that stuff like that. You can, you can kick this right out because they're not going to do this at all. What they will, Boston will likely do instead of doing something like this is Marshawn's gone, man. Seriously. Uh, may, the keep Pasternak. Hall, I know, won't want to go, but 
it's time to move on. You keep McAvoy, you keep Pasternak. They're young enough you can rebuild around them. And uh, your Hamp Hampus Lindholm, who you just brought in, has doesn't have a no trade clause. Gave him a sweet contract. Thanks, guys. Thanks, but I got to. We got to move on. Sorry, you know we thought Bergeron. You can you can work it that oh we thought Bergeron Bergy might stay, but since he's not staying, doesn't look like it's going to work out. Hampus. It's not going to be a nice exit, and it does make it difficult to get free agents when you do things like this, but I think it's the only thing that they should do. In which case, you may want to keep Carlo at 25 years old and guys like that, but I think it's time to rebuild if they don't do this. If they are going to say, you know, well, let's keep on going, keep on trying here, give it, you know, sponsors are going to be pissed, we're going to lose sponsors, we still got to win, I could see them doing something like this. You're right, they would have to make up They'd have to trade off Smith. I mean, they would have such a weak roster if they did this. It would They would have to hurt their depth because they really don't have the cap space to have a deep team and milk it at the same time. But I got some letters on it asking about whether Boston would do it, and I'm sure it's Boston fans that are, like, just crossing their fingers that this ain't over. But to tell you the honest truth, I think it's over. Next, Washington Capitals. Again, all of these teams have very little cap space. Uh, but Washington Capitals, the reason why they're third here is they are incredibly motivated. They still have they, – they, they've decided to go with the old guys all the way through here. They got Ovechkin. They got Backstrom. Kuznetsov is 30. Oshie's 35. They don't appear to be going anywhere. They are showing no signs of a rebuild in this organization at all. Like, not at all. They get, they just keep on giving contracts left, right, and center. So what do they have? $8 million for next year. And they got people to sign. Like, they have no defense. Uh, the, this would basically not sign in Schultz. You're going to be using some younger, hoping that you have some younger defensive prospects that can come in and play. And you got to give, and you're going to give Malkin seven million for two or three years, maybe if he's willing to do it for seven, if he's willing to go seven. And then you got a million dollars to work the rest of your roster somehow. But that being said, you can fill out that roster as the season goes on, right? I mean, you're you're going for it anyways. Oh, yeah, and that's the other problem. Goaltending is the really big issue here. So uh, Sam Sonoff and Vanacek are probably not going to get you anywhere. They're going to have to work on their goaltending somehow. But with all things, I mean, goaltending doesn't just t grow off trees. Otherwise, they would have one right now. And assuming you can't find anybody out there, a goaltender out there, you might as well go with a guy, somebody like Malkin, who is Russian. You can play with Ovechkin and, I mean, score the crap out of everybody and pray to God you can find a goaltender at the deadline when the cap has, when half the, you know, half the contracts are all paid out. If you can, if you can scoop a quality, quality goaltender or maybe a defenseman at the deadline, you can put Malkin, Ovechkin, and Wilson. Woo! That would be incredible, man. Uh, Kuznetsov, Mantha, and Oshi, or Backstrom, or put Kuznetsov down here. You can we could we could trade Eller away. Maybe get a goaltender out of that. We don't need Eller, right? In Washington right now, if you got Malkin, you don't need him. Maybe get a defenseman to fill out the roster a little bit here. Uh, what do they have for? Yeah, see, they don't really have. They really don't have that great a defense prospects or anything like that coming up either. So. It's thin, but they already knew that. And if you're going to go for it, might as well go for it. And then cross your fingers, you can fill out all these holes later. Because your top, the top six would be insane. That first line would get you in the playoffs first, right, right off the top. As long as Malkin stays healthy. Uh, Malkin, Ovechkin, and Wilson, like that would be freaking, who's going to touch that line? Seriously. That is a huge, high-scoring 
kick your ass. You can't touch this line right off the get-go. And then uh, put Kuznets off with Mantha and Oshi, and then Backstrom's a wonderful third line, if, although although very expensive. They can help out M McMichael become whatever he's going to become, and you know you can fill in guys as you go. I could see it. I could see it. I, I think goaltending would be the number one concern for Washington, and they'll probably throw their money at that if they can find it. But if they can't, Melkin's on the horn there, and they're like, you know what, uh, we'll have to figure out our goaltending later. And uh, we're going to throw Melkin in here and hope we can hit pay dirt at the deadline for a really, really good goaltender like they tried to with Flurry or something like that. What do you think, Washington fans? Comment in the comment section. Sub up to my YouTube channel and tell me all about it. All right, next, the LA Kings. And the LA Kings are made the playoffs this year. I mean, they're just green. They're just young. They're a very young team, except for Kopitar, a couple of guys like I follow who, I, honestly, I, I don't really consider a number one winger. And maybe wingers might be more what they should be looking for here. Melkin did play wing with Crosby for a while there, though. I mean, you could try him out on the left side with Kopitar and Kempe if he's willing to do it. He gets to go to L.A. It's warm over there. I know it's a long ways. It's not like Washington, where I just talked about, where you're going to a rival, but it's close. It's close to Philly. You know, uh, it's a long ways away, but it's warm. It's a beautiful place to live. And you're get, he would be getting a huge opportunity. Now, if they play him up the middle, Dan O can go down here in the third line, and Byfield can learn from Malkin for the next two years. Like, uh, what are their – what's the cap space again? For the next two years uh, is what I would try to do is a two-year deal. Here for them, you got 20 million, and I know they got guys to sign. Maybe you bring Edler back. Uh, they probably got to get a more experienced defenseman somewhere. Uh, Anderson's going to demand a little bit for sure. Dersey can give them a bridge deal. Um, you know, it's not. Uh, there's nobody here that they that they have to load up on. They could offer him, you know, eight for two years. Or something like that. Maybe even three. And you got that veteran with tons of playoff experience. One cups. Superstar in Malkin. He gets the opportunity to be the man. Although Kopitar is still kind of the man. Malkin uh, is offensively anyways. It's more of a, is definitely more of a beast offensively than Kopitar. And you saw what happened in the playoffs. They didn't have shooters, man. Melkin is a shooter. Melkin can make everybody around him better. He can make the Arthur Kaliev. You play him with Kaliev, man. This kid's ready to break out, right? Uh, Rasmus Kupari, Trevor Moore had a career year. You know, play him with these guys and allow and have them have one of the best playmaking, goal scoring centers in the, that has in this last decade, and see what this team can become. Now, I still think that I personally think that Jonathan Quick is uh, he's not the guy you want to go on a cup run with. But a lot of people will think otherwise. He's thirty. He's going to be thirty-seven next year. I think it's a lot to ask, and Cal Peterson probably isn't it either. So maybe they look at their goaltending as well. And, uh, you know, one more year for all this defense. They could use a big defenseman. I know you're saying that out there. But $20 million in cap space, you might be able to fill it out other ways. You get a true number one center. And when you're going up against teams with, like, Dreisaitl and McDavid on them, you know, those teams, you're kind of going to need something more than Kopitar and Dano. I'm, I'm sorry. Dano is a wonderful two-way guy. He's a good shutdown guy, but I mean, those you need more than that. You need more. And I think I could see LA doing it. Tell me what you think, LA fans. Uh, comment in the comment section. Sub up to my YouTube channel. Comment down there. I'll talk to you. I will talk to you finally.
this would be just the stupidest thing in the world right here if this were to happen. The Colorado Avalanche. Uh, this would be based on the fact that Kadri is not re-signed. They have $25 million in cap space. Now, we know McKinnon's going to need a deal after next year. And that's going to be enormous. Uh, they don't have to sign Burakovsky. They have some young players that can take his spot. Nazem Kadri is going to get paid, yo. They could just keep Kadri. They could just keep Kadri. But the thing is, Kadri is going to get probably seven years after what he's doing in the playoffs this year. It's going to take him up till he's 38 years old. And I just think Joe Sackick's too smart for that. No matter how good he is right now, it was, it was a career year. He's never did anything like this before. On a contract year, yet. On a contract year, he had, you know, 87 points in 71 games. He's never even come close to that before this. So unless Kadri decides to, you know, Sackick does his voodoo as he does, like he did with Ranton in signing a $9 million deal, lands Scott at seven for eternity. It's possible he could. You know, maybe he just does his voodoo and Kadri signs a contract for $7 million for years. Okay, then you don't even worry about this deal. You take that. But if he's going to get the nine, nine and a half that I think he's going to get for seven or eight years from a team like, say, somebody we just talked about, Philadelphia, they may not be in on the Malkin sweepstakes. You can get Malkin for eight for three and roll the dice on that, and you're not then committed for seven or eight years. Maybe they do it. And my gosh, what a lineup this would be. Holy crap. You got Malkin. You just keep that line together. Malkin, Ranton, and Nechuskin, Landeskog, McKinnon, and Lekkinen. Then Newhook, Comfer, and Kubel. Yeah, you don't even need Burakovsky. He's not in. He's not. Are they taking him out of the lineup? No, good. They should. You don't even need Burakovsky. Maybe you don't sign Obel, but I mean, you've got young players coming up that could do that. Malta can take a spot. Martin Couch should be ready soon. You got um, Nico Sturm still there if you want to sign him for a couple mil. This lineup is stacked. And if you put Malkin in there with the cups that he has, especially if Colorado doesn't win the cup this year, because I think if Colorado doesn't win the cup this year, one of the things that are going to be on their minds is maybe, and I got in trouble for this last time I did this, I said that they had no cups in the room, and I was wrong. Darren Helm does have a cup. And Burkowski has, does have a cup. However, as you can see, he's not even in the lineup. Burkowski is one of those guys that won a cup, but he's not really a guy that like brings that cup-winning attitude to it. Malkin, on the other hand, he can bring it, man. He can bring it. That's my number one spot. If he's available and Colorado doesn't win a cup, maybe even if they do win a cup, I could see them lining up for it. What do you guys think? Colorado fans, you think that uh, I'm talking out of my ass here? Not a chance, Mr. Perlo guy, whoever you are. <laughs> Not a chance that this is going to happen. Where's my window capture so you can see this beautiful face? <laughs> Tell me what you think in the comment section. Sub yourself up to my channel. That's my full 42. Tell me also if you think there's any other teams that could be involved. Do you think Malkin ends up going back to Pittsburgh? All of those things, because that's why I do this stuff, because I love talking to you. Love talking hockey. Say bye.